Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the MakeCoder Community Advanced Stream. I'm Richard. I'm Richard at the MakeCoder Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the MakeCoder Forum. And I'm Sarah at S Rekirk on the MakeCoder Forum. And today we are continuing to work on Bug President, our Pikmin style game. So if you haven't been viewing stream for the past few days, we're making a Pikmin like game starring this little guy named Bug President. And, um, you know, you can do Pikmin things. You can walk around, um, you can throw out your little bug minions um, to do tasks for you. And they'll pick up stuff and carry it and, you know, move things around. And that's all nice and good. You can call them back. Usually. That's weird. Oh. I don't think we've seen that bug before. Could it be related to the camera movement? I know we had to correct the drawing of that circle, but. I don't think it should be a problem. I guess we can go to the top and down. Maybe it's just like broken all oh. up. All right, we'll have to figure it out. All right. Well, anyway. Um, so what are we working on today? Well, first we're going to figure out that bug. But um, the other thing that we want to do is, so this is something we talked about a while ago. But right now we're using the friction that is built in for make code when we throw the bugs. So if I just start throwing in a bunch of directions. You can see I'm getting a square of bugs. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we want. The reason this is happening is because of how the friction being split into the X component and the Y component kind of interacts with each other. And you end up getting this like one goes to zero first and then the other one keeps going. And so, yeah, anyway. But uh, we don't actually want to do that. We, we want to just have like nice constant friction. I want when I throw things around, I want them to be in a little circle around me. So we're going to fix that too. Shouldn't take too long. And then we'll just kind of get into, I think, the continuing the like making this into an actual game. So we started last time. We have this, you know, timer up here now and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, by the way, for carrying things, here's here's an actual demo. You can watch these guys carry these berries into the Cute. All right. Um, see, I can grab them. Um, OK, we need to figure out why exactly we can't grab these guys. Oh, I have a theory, I guess. Um, it's just the bugs that didn't get assigned to any tasks, right? They just stopped. Yeah, it seems that way. I think what might be happening is that their kind is staying to throne bug or something. And so when Good. we call them back, they're not getting called. I don't know. We'll have to look at this code which is right here. All right. So for this calling code, we have this um, on game update. If we are calling bugs, then we are going to get all of the sprites of kind bug and all of the sprites of kind busy bug. And then we have them follow bug president. So yeah, looks right to me. Um, we're also stopping the animations. We're stopping canceling their follow path and. Yeah, OK, so let's let's that code looks OK. So let's go ahead and look at the other code, which is um, when we throw a bug, it's of kind thrown bug. Yeah, if we're just using friction to stop them, then probably never even made a check to change it to. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. So we are like when we do this throw thing, we call this on throw end, and then we set it to bug. Let's make sure this code's actually running. Um, the way we're going to do this is just have it say I'm a bug now, <laughs> and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, yep, that's running. OK, now they're getting picked up. Oh, oh, is it potentially that the timer was out? Oh, does that affect anything? Do we stop stuff when the timer runs out? I don't know. Here, that's easy to test. So collapse blocks for my code doing a Daryl. We're going to go to our start round function right here. And we're going to set this to be round time to be 
one. And there we go. Timing's out. So we'll go ahead and throw these guys and then try calling them back. And uh, nope. Nope, that's not it either. Bizarre. I, I, why is this no longer happening? We're just going to have to, we'll see if it happens again. And if it does, we'll we'll debug it then. But I can't do anything if I can't reproduce it. So yep. that's the worst problem of a programmer when you find a bug and then you can't repro it. So you just kind of have to move on <laughs> and hope it doesn't happen again, but also hope it happens again so you can solve the error. Yeah. It really is awful. That and like race condition techniques. So I guess they they're kind of hand in hand. Yeah. Um, all right, so ignoring that, um, let's go do the other thing, that friction thing. So um, when we are throwing our bugs, I'm guessing that's happening inside of an on a button pressed. Yeah, here we go. So here we're creating our bug and we are giving them friction. Um, and we're going to go ahead and pull out this friction. Get out of there. So now we can throw them and they'll just go forever or until they hit a wall. Go, yay. Um, all right, we, sorry. Yeah, we want to we want to give them um, we want to do our own friction and we, we I think we've actually done this on stream before. I'm trying to think of what game we did it in. Yeah, whenever. No, you need Joey for that kind of thing. Yeah, I was just going to say Joey might know. <laughs> All right, um, so we're going to go back to that code we were just looking at. Not that. This one. My cats are, um, I don't know if it's playing or fighting, but uh, rambunctious. OK. So we have this um, uh, thing where we're already looping over all of the sprites of kind throne bug. And so what we're going to do is um, if their speed is not less than one, um, we are going to go into Sprite Utils, grab the set velocity at angle. And all we have to do here is get the, oh, let's see, inside of Sprite Utils, I remember I added blocks for this. So we have the speed block um, and we have the velocity angle block. Well, what just happened? Oh, I think we're having them. There's a, there's a weird bug, which I've been noticing lately, that I think has to do with collapsing blocks, where sometimes blocks will just disappear. And what's actually happening is they're getting connected to some random input in some block that was collapsed. Um, I think the, the issue is with the um, uh, connection database that Blockly keeps. This is all internal Blockly stuff. But there's a database of connections that Blockly keeps um, locations of all the different connection points so that it's faster to look it up. I don't know if that's actually necessary, but maybe it was back in the day when Blockly was first implemented. Um, and uh, I'm guessing that when we collapsed blocks, we're not updating that. But anyway, all right, this is not important. All right. So we are setting the angle to be the current angle. That's good. And we're setting the speed to be the uh, maximum of the speed minus one. So that's our friction right there. Um, and zero. And we put that in just so that we don't go negative. Um, I, I don't actually know what this block would do with negative. I assume that it would just start going in the opposite direction, but we wanted to uh, stop. All right, so here we go. Throw these guys. And we can see they are now slowing down. Um, Probably going a little bit too far. Yeah. Um, so let's change this to minus two. That might be too far in the other direction, but we'll see. Down to an open area. Right. No, that's OK. It's farther than we did before, but honestly, it's not that. Like, I feel like, it, yeah, it feels reasonable. 
Um, could you do like a 1.5 kind of thing, or would that be bad? Yeah, we could. That would work fine. Let's do 1.8. There you go. Yeah, I think that works. All right. Well, cool. OK, so we now don't have that weird square problem we had before. We're, we now our bugs are getting laid out in a nice little circle. And um, we're not doing this just for this weird scenario where you're spinning around and shooting bugs. It was pretty noticeable when you were actually playing the game that they were like going for a bit and then turning into a straight line, you know, when one of them bottomed out. So this should not be a, a problem anymore. So that's great. All right. With that, um, let's get into the actual making this a game. And um, to do this, I guess what we're going to do is let's take our test level. Actually, we'll turn it into a little bit of an actual level. And then we are going to make it so that we have points that are being tracked and um, going to do like the whole when the round ends, we tally up your points and we give you a medal. And the medal, um, I think we mentioned before, is going to be based on what percentage of all the things you got. And um, yeah, about it. Let's see, Antonio Adrian says, I just spent five minutes waiting for a terminal command to finish, but it didn't auto scroll, so I didn't see the words done for four minutes. Done that before. The worst, right. even worse scenario is, and I think that Windows developers can sympathize with me here, you're using the old command prompt and you have highlighted the text somewhere in your terminal which for some ungodly reason, if you highlight text in the terminal, it freezes all processes that the terminal is doing. This was, because yeah. I, I, I learned- Does to program it freeze the it. process or does it just freeze the output? Like no, when you freezes, unselect it, it just like goes, The process stops running. Oh, wow, I didn't know that actually. I just assumed it was freezing the output. Wow, well, that's even better. Yeah, it's, it's nonsense um, and, uh, when I came from my programming on Unix background, it really threw me for a loop. Um, yeah, I still have never really worked with command prompts proper. I always I just use the new terminal that Windows released, and that's like basically been all of my programming experience. So I've never had to deal with these wonky things. I also use WSL. I'm a stride user of WSL, so. Yes, I also like WSL. Oh, hey, there you go. All right, so this is this is actually, I think, an example of that bug that I was just talking about. Um, I think I put that block down somewhere, and this one was collapsed, and it, it sh shoved itself into that input. Yikes. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I'm like, a little call popped up, but I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. like, maybe it was just there. So it can cause problems in your code if you just, like, try to put something in yeah, like just put it into the workspace, but it was collapsed, and so you just shove it into an input. Yeah, but I don't think That's it's actually impacting that many people because it's like an advanced. Fair enough. Oh, hey, Otto. Otto, everybody. Wait, let me switch. This Yay! <laughs> there you go. Otto's on the cat. Oh, no, I'm the big one. Here, everyone look at Otto. <laughs> it's 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 Such difficult to photograph black ass. All right, sorry, Otto. I do have to kick you off. See ya. Um, lots of good cats on the Mako team. I wish y'all could true. see all the cats. They're so good. We don't have any dogs though, right? Uh, no, they're no, no, no. Tom. Tom. Yeah. And Ian. But oh, true, 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 true. One day, me and Charlie will have a corgi. Yeah, I'll believe Workings it when I see I feel it. like are hard to maintain, though. I don't know. Corgis? Or yeah. dogs in general? Yeah, corgis, about corgis, but dogs too, so. All right, so we're going to make a simple level um, for our game. And the idea here is, so we have our home base right here. We're going to put in some food items that need to be picked up. So that is our F. I think T, we're not actually, we haven't done anything with this. So it's just going to be F. T is treasure, right? Yeah, so but we don't strawberry. have any. No, uh, I, I think I think strawberry is F. 
Or or did I? F is. I thought T was strawberry. And F. No, I wait. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Look, F right there is doing nothing. You're right. T is strawberry. All right. So um, what we're going to do here is we are going to be using um, these walls to make a little shortcut that you can knock down. Like that. I think we're also going to. Um, here, I want to make this. That. Right. Um, and we're going to put in some. Let's see, so G is for grapes. So let's put some grapes right here. And um, we're going to let's I don't know, like I, I, don't, I don't really have any ideas right now for like what a fun level would be. So I'm just going to. This is really just going to be a level that's introducing mechanics to you. So here we're going to put in um, uh, a strawberry. And um, I'm going to put in another gate right here. Um, and yeah, that's fine now. By the way, you might be like, why are you only putting in those flat tiles and not making it so that it is like all nice and curvy? Well, we, we automatically do that. Our, our game will read the, the other surrounding tiles and turn it into, you know, nice and curved. Though I realize now we have a bug in our yeah. notes. This, this should hey, be sorry, I say your corners aren't Go to make tile map pretty, who is what we named this. Yeah, make tile map pretty. And I'm guessing what we're doing is we're checking if it's. Yeah, so we're just checking if it's transparency everywhere. So if it's not transparency, it's going to get mixed, messed up. Oh, there's a wall. Mm. The breakable walls. Should, it's, should we just check specifically for the wall tile? Oh, no, then it won't work when you're doing. Yeah. Cheat. Oh, OK, I know what to do. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is. Let's see, do I have that turn walls on function I made? Yeah, here we go. We're going to turn on walls for these tiles. <clears throat> and um, instead of checking if this is transparency, we're going to check if it's a wall or not. The... Also, another bait code cat here. Oh, yeah. This one's bad. Aren't the uh, breakable walls also walls, though? Will we not have the same issue? Or do we do that after? So we'll do it after. after. Yeah. So we're going to have to go to our on time map loader to make sure we're calling this first. But um, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're, we want to check and we want an is wall block right here. Um, and we actually want to wrap this inside of a knot because we were checking if it's transparency before, so we want to do the opposite. And then we'll go ahead and stick this in here. Get rid of that. And this is going to be nice and tedious. OK, this is top. Make that top. Make this one's bottom. Make that bottom. That's definitely something I would I was thinking about for like Blockly. And I was wondering if they they maybe do this already where you can select multiple blocks because there are so many times when like I have blocks in a row that I want to collect, which I mean, I guess I could just wrap it in like one of those if like an if statement or something and then move it and then remove the if statement. But like, mm -hmm. I want a way to select multiple blocks at a time and then move them. So like in this situation, we could just select all the things, move them out, and then move a group in or something. Yeah, it would be tough in this specific scenario, but I have also had that desire. Yeah. 
Um, okay, and I forgot a knot right here. There we go. All right, I fixed that. Um, we need to do the same thing here. So um, we're checking if this is transparent. We want to change this to be checking if it is um, not a wall. So grab this. We just want temp location here. Go, and then the rest of these are fine. We don't have to check them. Oh, uh, ooh, um, oh yeah, I don't think this will actually be an issue. Yeah, this will be fine. Um, okay, so one issue here is that we're just checking if it's not a wall. So say I made. This map. It would cover these up. You get what I'm saying? Here, let's let's actually run this and see what happens. There you go. Oh, oh, right. oh. Um. Oh. You could fix that, or you could just not do that. Yeah, I don't know if it's really um, really an issue. Oh, you know what? Actually, I can just undo my other fix and just literally check if it's transparent. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, that'll fix it. All right, cool. Um, and with that, we have fixed our tile map, so now it looks pretty again. So I can walk down here. Let's break down this wall. Do it, my minions. There we go. Um, and we can also have them grab this strawberry. Beautiful. So is that All a right. Pikmin mechanic where it's like, some bugs don't like exa aren't exactly shot at the thing that you were looking at. They'll just kind of go off and do something else or stay where they were last thrown. Cause like there are still some bugs down there where you threw it towards a strawberry, but they just kind of stayed on the wall. Yeah. So in Pikmin, if you miss and they can't detect what they're supposed to do, then yes, they will not go. It, it is actually my to do list to take care of those near misses to a certain extent. So if it's near something, I do want them to detect that and then like go to the task. But nice. if you do throw them and there is no task for them to go to, they are just going to be stuck. There's nothing we can do in that case. You have to call them back. Makes sense. Um, all right, cool. So um, how do we detect if a round ends? So um, I guess actually before we do that, let's just count points. So the way we're going to count points is um, we don't want to use the score because we already we're doing our own text for all of this. We're not just going to use the built-in score. We're going to do our own thing, but we're going to have to make another HUD element here. Um, so we're going to have a number here that is going to represent our score. Um, and I think we're just going to put it up here in the top right. Um, and we're going to do the same little cutout thing for it, you know? Um, and uh, let's just make a variable for this. We're going to make a variable of score. Um, and inside of our start round function, right click, go to definition. There it is. We're going to set our score to be zero. So um, when our score is um, updating, every single time we change our score, we're going to want to update this little HUD element up here. And unlike our timer one, where we had to um, uh, like do some weird centering logic, because this is in the top right, we don't really care. Um, so we can just make one text sprite that's going to represent our score, and we'll just have it you know, locked up here. Um, so let's do that right now. We're going to um, 
up here we're making our timer sprite. And oh, I need to rename these variables real quick. I'm going to prefix all HUD things. Not like that. That's interesting, though. I didn't realize that we don't have like a way to customize things like our countdowns and score and stuff. I feel like that'd be a fun thing to add. Or like, I don't know if we would do it in an extension or just like a plus of like make score look like this or like you pass in like uh, asset almost. Yeah, we don't really have those things, you know, so I, this is using my fancy text extension, which is kind of the first thing that lets you change the font. There are three right, fonts that right. are built into the base of Arcade, but they are um, they all have specific purposes, and you only you really only want to use one of them, which is the regular font you get when you print text. Um, Makes sense. All right, so we want this to be HUD uh, score sprite, and we're going to change set this to be a. Text file like that. Make it the empty string. Want to make it so it's using the same color we're using for other text like that. And we want our font to be the same font we've been using for everything, which is this rounded small font. All right. Um, and as for the backgrounds, um, I think we're just going to programmatically draw it because. Uh, yeah, that'll that'll be fine. Um, so we we did this one intention. We we drew this one because we knew what the width was going to be, but this one is going to have a width that's changing. So I feel like we might as well just draw it programmatically. All right. Um, inside of this update timer function, we're doing all of our HUD updates. So I'm going to add this here too. And um, down here at the bottom. We're going to grab this set text for our HUD score sprite. And we want this to just be our score. And I have to wrap this inside of a text join because it's a number. Um, text join, if you didn't know, it's a fancy trick. Um, we'll just convert whatever you put inside of it into a, a string. So if you, even if you don't join it with anything, come a string. Um, all right, there you go. You can see it right there. Now, um, we also want to set some flags on this guy. Um, so this one, we want to be relative to camera, which we talked about last time. That means it is stuck to the screen. We don't want it moving around as we move around. Um, so let's go ahead and set that flag on. Oh, uh, do 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 relative to camera on. And by the way, if you're using this flag, um, one other thing you should know is it's um, makes it so that the um, there are no overlaps with the sprite as well. So it automatically turns on ghost if you use that flag. Handy. Yeah. All right, so we're going to set its right to be the screen width. So let's grab that from scene. And we probably want to subtract like one from it, so it's not like right up against the screen. This one. That you should see it over here now. There we go. And um, then we want to move it up to the top. So. Um, we will set the top to be, I think that's one pixel. It's not right up against the edge, right? Yeah. So we'll set the top to be one, and hopefully that'll look right. If not, we'll adjust it. Uh, OK, we need to set it to be zero. There we go. All right, so that, that looks right. We're all lined up with our other text. Um, cool. 
OK, and now let's go ahead and draw that background. So we're going to do that inside of a. Um, oh, we also need to set the Z on this guy. Um, so we're going to set the Z to be. 100, which is the that's the Z depth I always use for. Um, HUDs. So I just use it because then I can remember. All right, let's draw that. What background. would happen if you didn't set the Z index? Uh, other things would go on top of it, like bug president when he walked on top of it would be on top of it. You know, the yeah, higher the sense. Z index, the the later it gets drawn. So if it's the highest Z index will be the thing that's drawn last, so it'll be on top. Nice. Um, OK, so we're going to go ahead and render this thing. Let's see, do I have a render I can just tack this onto? What is this? This is drawing the circle. Ah, uh, no, I'll give it its own render. So the render block is my favorite block. It is from um, Sprite Utils and is the number one reason I add Sprite Utils to a project, I think. That and set velocity at angle. Those two blocks are why I always add Sprite Utils to every project I do. Also, hi, Ham993. Um, all right, we're going to set this to be 99. So we want it to be below the other one. So we're setting it one down for the Z index. Um, and for now, let's just draw a rectangle. Um, so inside of images, we'll grab the fill rectangle, make this screen. Um, and we want to do this with the color, this one. And um, the way we're going to do this is we can use our sprite width and height. So we'll set this to be our HUD, not timer sprite, HUD score sprite. Um, and so for the X, what we want to do is the screen width minus whatever the width of our sprite is. Because this X is going to be the left of the rectangle we're drawing. The Y we do want to be zero. Zero is the top of the screen, so that works well. And uh, let's just see if we're drawing in the right place. Oh, we can go ahead and just put the width right here for that. And we'll just put the height right here for this. I think that'll actually be too high, but um, it'll be OK. All right, so um, all right, few issues. Um, OK, so why is this not lining up perfectly? Well, um, so first of all, the reason that it's taller is because this font, the Arcade Fancy Text extension, sizes the sprite so that um, it uh, also includes, if I were to say type a letter P, which goes below the baseline, um, all of that extra height. Um, this character does not happen to go beyond the baseline, but it still includes that extra height because of that reason. Um, now, why is it being drawn at the like one pixel over from the left? That has to do with how we like calculate the left of a sprite. Um, and it's just an off by one error. Um, but anyway, we're, we're going to fix both of these. Um, so we're going to take this and subtract two, I think, from this. Or actually, how much space are we giving over here? OK, we're going to subtract three because it looks like we're giving two pixels of space. For padding. So we'll subtract three here. Oh, but I want that inside of the X, not the one. Um, that means we have to change this width to be plus three also, so we'll do that. And now for the height, we're just going to subtract some number. I don't know what, maybe two. We'll see if it's two, and if it's not two, we'll subtract three. Yeah, that looks right. Um, all right, yes. cool. Yes, and 993, we are making a score. Yeah. OK, um, now though, we have to do this little curve, right? Because this is hurting my eyes to not have the curve there. 
Um, and uh, I guess we're going to actually undo what I just did. So um, we want to, uh, for this X first, we're going to only subtract by, let's see, how many pixels do I have to move over? So basically what I want to do is I want to draw this rectangle. So here, let me let me show it on the actual image. I want to draw this rectangle. And then I'm going to fill in this rectangle and this rectangle separately so that, you know, we get this little cutout here. So I'm dividing this into like the minimum number of rectangles I can use. Um, so in order to make that happen, I just need to do one less for this. So we're going to do minus two instead of minus three. And then I need to do one less for this also. So we're going to do minus one. Oh, no, 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 whoops, whoops. We, we need to subtract one more. So we want to do minus three. There we go. That looks right. And now we're just going to fill two more rectangles. So let's do the one on the left first. So for this one, we're just going to take the X and do minus three. We're going to leave the Y like that. We're going to leave the height the same. And then we're going to make the width just one. There you go. Oh, this this should actually should be the height minus one, shouldn't it? So it should be minus four. Beautiful. And now we're going to do the bottom part. So um, for that, let's see. We want to be um, let's see one pixel over, two pixels over, three pixels over. For the bottom line. Yeah. I think we want it to be minus one. Yeah. Now this Y needs to be not zero. This Y needs to be the um, height minus two, I guess. The width should be, uh, we'll just copy this width. That'll be fine. We want to be precisely plus one, but it'll just get cut off anyway. And then the height, we just want to be one. There you go. This is either right or it's wrong. There you go. All right, we're off by one on the Y, but we got everything else right. So make this minus three. Beautiful. All right, cool. Got a nice little Thanks. thing there. Um. All right, and I, actually, I kind of want to make this guy go one pixel over. Because it's one pixel from the top. I also want it to be one pixel from the right. You know, so. Let's do that. Hey, breakfast. You guys can't hear it, but breakfast was just going. Rip. Good cat noises. He's a talker. He'll talk to you. See, I'm looking for update timer. There we go. And we're setting the right to be screen width minus one. So we're just going to set it to be screen width. And because we used the. Well, actually, yeah, we are going to have to adjust this by one because we're using the width. Ugh. What if I just set it to the X, did it all relative to the X instead of the width? Because the X should be basically the spot. Yeah, we should have done it with the left, but oh well, we already wrote our code. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, OK, so just everywhere we're using this width, we want to um, uh, subtract by one less. So it would make this one and two and zero. That should shift over, and there we go, fixed. All right, cool. There's our score. Let's actually count our score now. Um, so, do a Daryl. Um, I think we have an on sprite. Okay, we want these ones, I think. 
So what I'm looking for is we have some code when a path gets completed, when a path following path gets completed. And that's where we want to change our score. Right, OK. So this is where a grape completes its path. And then we get rid of the grape and we make it go back to pick up more grapes if it can, or if there's some other logic where if it can't get more grapes, it just stays there, all of that stuff. But um, we know that if we have this grape and it finishes its path, that definitely means we want it to um, our our point to go a uh, point to go up. Um, so we're going to take our score, and you know I'm just going to anticipate that we're going to want a function for this. Go and we're just going to change our score by one there. And now down here. All right, so for this one, this is when we get a strawberry. So this is a sprite kind food completes path. So when a sprite kind food completes path, we make all of the bugs dance. That's what this animation is. Um, and then we do this uh, separately do where the um, uh, sprite gets thrown into the hole and it gets smaller. Um, and so right here, we, we're actually going to do this right now. We, we don't really care if it happens when the sprite goes in the hole or not. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit better if it does. If we do it when it goes in the hole, it'll be more natural. Um, so the number of points that this is worth is going to be whatever the weight of the thing is. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and grab that weight. We have it inside of our sprite. Go. Is it going to be an issue that we destroyed the sprite and then tried to access a value on nope. it? Okay. That's not a problem. The object still exists. It's just not in our game anymore. Oh, okay. Um, and now finally, we just need to actually implement this function, which right now is just going to do change score by value. And let's test this out. So let's break down this wall. Go my bug minions. Um, watch them, see if it goes up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> um, and let's see when it goes into double digits. So this thing weighs eight, so it should go up to 16. Should work fine. There you go, 16. Beautiful. Um, all right, cool. We didn't get to see the bugs dance. I'm so upset. <laughs> OK, all right, we can see the bugs dance. Um, also, we should make but can we make bug president also dance when a strawberry gets in? Bug president <laughs> above it. Fine, I guess that's fair. He's not doing the work, so bug president doesn't need to dance. All right, I have to beat <laughs> these guys back. Ants, they're faster Run. than me. <laughs> okay, okay. There you go. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Right. Um, OK, 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 OK. So that's all nice and good. Um, we need to end the round now once all of the things are collected. Um, so that means that in order to make that happen, we want to, um, inside of our on tile map loaded, when we're creating all of these objects for us to go pick up, we need to keep track of what the total like weight is for this level. Breakfast just knocked over a sheet of stickers of Otto, which I assume was symbolic. Um, these were made by former former team member Shannon um, after I watched her cat Ollie 
for, oh, here, I have a full sheet over here. I watched her cat Ollie for two weeks, so she made me AutoZone stickers. Wow. Those are amazing. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our tile map loaded. And I go ahead and collapse the code, collapse spots for my code, go to our on tile map loaded event, which is a slightly different color. And we are going to go into variables, make a top score. Uh, you know what? Actually, let me um, see. I'm using this round thing to do all of our other things for the round. So I actually want to take this score and I'm going to rename it to be round and underscore score. And I'm going to take all these other round variables and also prefix them the same way. Um, I like doing this because it makes it easier for me to find variables in the dropdown when I have a lot. Um, because they're alphabetized, and now all of these ones that are um, together, oh, I, I created a new variable instead of renaming one, didn't I? Okay, here that. Um, and so then when I'm trying to find them to write code, it, it becomes much easier. Um, you see, I'm already getting lost. Do, do, do. This just makes me think of like all the different casing that is preferred in different languages. Yeah. And now I've thought of what what's your favorite kind of casing when writing code? Kebab case. Isn't that the one that like looks like SpongeBob? Like the SpongeBob writing? It's like a the, the SpongeBob meme, I'm sorry, where it's like I, I don't <laughs> I don't know how to explain it without showing a picture for it. What's okay? Let me just look it up. You know, that'll just make it a lot easier. I feel like it's got to be okay. Yeah, lower letters with dashes, like a kebab. That is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's I that's like, not what I was. <laughs> I don't know what the term is for like camel casing, but you also uppercase the first letter. A uh, Pascal case. A Pascal case. Uh, as a uh, C sharp developer, most of my career, I've gotten very used to Pascal case for functions and camel case for variables, and that is what will always look right to me. And I'll always hate it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have against Pascal case? It's it's just like I associate it with C sharp code, mm. which is not the style of code I'm used to writing. You know, yeah, that's fair. there's nothing wrong yeah. with C sharp. OK, I work for Microsoft. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Pam 983 says, where is Shannon, Richard? Um, I mean, she's probably in Seattle somewhere. Uh, I don't I don't know. I talked to her on Wednesday. She's doing OK. Um, but yeah, she uh, she doesn't work for Microsoft anymore. But we're still good friends. Right. Um. All right, so we're changing our round top score by this weight number. Let's see, Unsign Arduino says camel case for function variables and Pascal case for classes. Ham993 says why though? It's like, well, I don't know, she wanted to do something else. <laughs> During the pandemic, a lot of people quit their jobs. That's true. She, uh, yeah, she works for a nonprofit now. All right, um, okay. So we're changing our round top score. We set it to zero at the top of this function. That's good. Um, and we can now, uh, inside of our change, 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 change score function, um, we could do a check and say if round score equals 
our round top score. Then, and we're going to make another function now. End round. Yeah, I don't actually know what. Um, so uh, the thing that's being asked in chat right now is what is the name for all caps with underscores in beneath the words? Which it's screaming snake case. Is that what it is? <laughs> I mean, I okay. Right. That's what plural site said. That's what Google said. That was the first one it, it brought up. I can't see yeah. any other ones. But if that's the case, if someone that calls it sc screaming snake case, that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty good. It's a good name. Um. All right. Cool. Got this end round in there now. Um. We need to call this one other place, which is we need to call this in our timer code so that when our timer runs out, we start running. Hi, Hassan. Give yourself a quarter. Well, Joey's not here. Joey's the, the bot's not on. Whoa, whoa, so. whoa. Uh, it's 51. Oh, wait, you're right. You're right. You're right. Change. Yeah, you're you're safe. A. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Hassan, do you know what it's called? So camel case, we all know and love. Kebab case. Pascal case, snake case. What is snake case where it's all capital? Like you do for constants. Oh, yeah. Like what's like a good name for it? Well, do you know, is, is there a name for it? I guess you don't know either. Yeah. Is there a good name? I don't know. Capital snake case, big snake case. <laughs> So Sarah uh, threw out screaming snake case. Screaming snake. <laughs> Unsigned Arduino has a, a link to source with Wikipedia. It's got a whole bunch of names for it, including screaming snake case, which is the actual one with the Wikipedia article. So wow. I think yeah, to be fair, I, I didn't I make call. the constant, constant yeah. case. That's just I mean, that's what I use it for. Though. I mean, that's true, <laughs> but it's not as fun as screaming snake case. What about, like, oh, what are you, I would what are you personally I'd go for shouting snake case. You know, so it feels mm. a little less violent. Yeah. yeah. What about uh, what, is, uh, what about snaky camel case? It's not camel what? case at all, though. <laughs> <laughs> you just put the the underscores in, in between. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my gosh, the most difficult case to follow. I feel like you right. can, we can make like a meme out of this of like what programmers call casing. Just like make a bunch of random things. OK, what am I doing? Um, right. Uh, so inside of our um, update timer, we're managing the invisibility of a bunch of sprites. And I just remembered we didn't do it for our score sprite. So let's do that right now. Uh, we want to set HUD score sprite to be invisible on when the round is not going, <laughs> and we want to set it to be invisible off when the round. Um, I don't know if this to be HUD score sprite. Let's set it off when it uh, is running. So beautiful. Okay, and now um, I guess inside of I guess even though it feels weird to put it here because this is mainly just doing sprite stuff. Um, I will put the timer check in here too. No, no, I won't. It, it feels like this should just be updating the HUD. So I'm just going to go to that on game update where we're calling this function. Right here. Because I mean, it's so lonely inside of this on game update. All it's doing is calling update timer. Yeah. And uh, we're going to say. If our round is started. Hassan, that's what I was talking about earlier. OK, when Richard said kebab case, I thought that's what he, <laughs> what he was talking about. Oh. Uh, thank you for writing that out, because I, um, I, I'm i like not logged into Twitch, so I don't know how me sending a message would look. But I'm watching the chat, so yeah, it, thank you it, for it, saying SpongeBob case. Yeah, it, it was <laughs> painful to type out. <laughs> There's not a way of the SpongeBob case. Just an actual thing. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to check our 
remaining time. So we have this round start, which is the number of milliseconds when we started the round, and then we have time since start, which is you know, giving us our total time. So if the time since start minus round time is greater than or equal to um, whatever our round time is, then we want to call our end round function. There you go. All right, and finally, inside of our end round, um, well, we don't really have any time to write any more code, so let's just talk about what we wanted to do. Um, kind of what I wanted to do is like um, make a whistle sound effect and say have some text show up that's like that's it or something. Uh, oh, time's up. And then go to a result screen is what I'm thinking. Even on a success, so I feel like I associate wish whistle like what, what Thomas was saying, like the time's up, but you not didn't necessarily get it. But like if it, you succeeded in getting everything, then it would sound different. I don't know. I think you would still get a whistle. Like even at the end of a, like if you're playing a volleyball game to twenty, they still blow the whistle when the game is over. Fair enough. You know. Fair. Just need to make sure we don't say time's up, or say something more generic, like you proposed that I said, which I guess makes sense. Yeah, we could use the big font. You know what? We do have time to write that, so let's do that right now. Um, we're going to grab a text sprite. We're going to do. That's it. Um, we'll probably make it say something else because that's kind of nonsense. <laughs> make this this color. And then we'll do the big version of this font, rounded large. We're going to set it to be relative to camera. I think we need a create UI text function. What, that just sets relative to camera? It's the sprite, sets it relative to camera. I guess that's it. I guess that's what I felt like there was another thing we were doing, but yeah, it's how not about, enough code for yeah. that. How about bug out for the text? Hmm. Instead of that's it. I like the use of bug. Yeah, it has to be bug related. <laughs> but it doesn't uh not quite. Not yeah, it, not there. It doesn't quite make sense, but Okay. I'll I'll keep I'll keep thinking. Um, okay, so let's test this out. What? Unhappy. Temper sprite interfering somehow? Oh, it's in that block. Oh, does it, it doesn't like me using temp sprite here? That's no, no, I, I, I don't think that's what it is. I, I was just, that was a total guess, but. It could be that. I thought I made this text sprite thing just return a sprite and not a text sprite, but I might have, I might be wrong there. Still angry? Nope, that was it. Nice. I love when my completely random guesses just work. <laughs> All right. Get those guys, carry those grapes. Carry the strawberry. Now just wait. That's it. There you go. <laughs> um, we'll put a background on this probably. Um, but I like the I like the font, so it looks nice. Oh. Um, all right. Um, probably that's all is better. Oh yeah. Richard, did you? I thought you made a game before with like a spider or not spider, but some other six-legged creature. Am I thinking about that correctly? I made a demo a while ago, which turned into this. OK, I had just like this guy walking around. Was it you or Joey? It was like you like paid. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, so I remember, like you paid particular attention to like how the legs moved. Yeah, yeah, I made a demo of that a long time ago. 
Uh, and I didn't actually use it for anything until now. Okay. Because um, I was I like, that was a, so familiar. Yeah, a little extension though. Um, it made it much better. So now the legs actually like realistically turn and stuff, which is nice. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's it, guys. Remember, we on Monday, we are going to have a mini game jam starting. I have not chosen a theme. I guess I'll figure that out right after this call. <laughs> um, I am at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I am Hassan at Hassan on the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Sarah at S Reekers on the Make Code Forum. And um, we will see you not on Monday because Monday is Labor Day here in the US. Um, so we're going to be off. I Don't worry, I'll put the mini game gym up though. Um, but uh, we will see you on Wednesday of next week. Uh, Lucas is in nearby. Hi, Lucas. Uh, Lucas says, can you all post a link to the game in chat? Sure thing. <laughs> yeah, it's not really playable yet, but um, I'll get that to you in just a second. Yeah. Um, Pam says, where put it up where uh, we put the mini game jams up on um, uh, the um, uh, forum. I can. Richard, do you want me to? Oh, you got, you got the list. I got it. You got it. All right. See you later, everybody. Bye. Bye.